Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, the show that gives you advice on everything travel. We explore places you've always wanted to go, as well as giving tips for traveling in those places. We'll give you advice on the best sites for travel tips, information, and discounts. Join us as we travel the world, explore cultures, and meet new people. The Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast has got you covered. Travel Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Sarah, and I was thinking about this episode for this week, and you know, it's December now, which means lots and lots of Christmas preparations, and Christmas everywhere got me to thinking about Christmas markets, which happen all over the place. The first one I think... Uh, I Yeah, I think the first one that I'd ever been to was when I lived for a year in Pennsylvania. And my sister came to visit, and we went to a local Christmas market. It was a lot of fun, I think. Uh, it was a really, really traumatic year for me when I was when I was living there and you know nothing against Pennsylvania uh, n- I don't have a problem with your state I just had a very uh, difficult year and my sister came out to kind of help give me a pick me up and so we went to this Christmas market and I did enjoy it I just kind of have blocked a lot of it <laughs> so um anyway it got me thinking that there's a bunch of christmas markets in europe of course and i have a friend who has lived in britain and who now lives in belgium and she's all oh, she posts pictures whenever they travel somewhere to go to a christmas market and i thought i want to do that that is a definite bucket list item so today's topic is Christmas markets and European Christmas markets specifically. So uh, I figure if I'm going to, if I'm going to dream, I'm going to dream big and you know, there are Christmas markets here in the States as well, but we're going to, we're going to dream about European Christmas markets today. And this list comes from jetsetter.com and it is their list of the uh, 13 top Christmas markets. I, why 13? I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's an odd number. The first one they say is Skansen's Christmas Market in Stockholm, Sweden. Um, Christmas isn't over in Stockholm until New Year's Eve fireworks go off, a tradition that has upheld been upheld by the open-air Skansen Museum and Zoo since 1903. In Bolnas Square, oh goodness, um, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but uh, Swedish Yuletide goodies have the lay of the land. The scent of sugared almonds, marzipan, smoked turkey, and fresh breads mingle in the market air. Um, you can step onto the property, uh, onto one of the property's farmstead houses, and you'll step back in time. The home's interiors and Christmas trees are adorned with period appropriate holiday decor, and tables are done up with typical Swedish feasts. I love that historical aspect with the, with the, the houses that you can step into and um, and go back in time, especially with the the decorated Christmas trees, because decorations have changed throughout the years, and uh, I'm and you know they're also different for different countries, different cultures. So that sounds really really fascinating to me. I would love to do that. Um, what to look for? The Christmas tree ring dance. On Saturdays and Sundays, professional dancers and regular visitors gather around the central tree to hold hands and twirl around to traditional music, which sounds fun and would also probably help to keep you warm because I think that Sweden is cold in the winter. Uh, That's my guess. Anyway, it looks cold in the winter. (laughs) So number one was Sweden, Stockholm, Sweden. Number two is Marche de Noël. Well, let's see, Marche de Noël. There's no accent. Um, in Lila, France. France? France. I don't know what's going on with me tonight. Um, at this Christmas market, French tradition meets Flemish influence at the annual March de Noël. 
um, festivities mount at Place Rehor, where 80 chalet-style stalls burst with holiday-themed gifts, festive foods, nativity scene figurines, and specialties from R- Poland, Russia, and Quebec. More than 900,000 people crowd the market each snowy season, um, with many making the hour-long commute from Paris and the two-hour commute from London. If you're looking to track down a traditional snack, go for um, Maroyas cheese, a Munster-like soft cheese, or honey-flavored babalutas, which is toffee-ish candies. <laughs> Uh, you know, the one thing that struck me in this one was the nativity figures. I love nativities. I have not as many as my mother, but I have a lot of nativity scenes. I have um, one that my father carved for me, which I absolutely love. I have one that I got at a church bazaar that is um, African in nature, and it's it's also beautifully handcrafted. I just, I have a lot of them, and I keep collecting them, and my husband doesn't get it. <laughs> They're not his favorite Christmas decoration, but that's what I would be, you know, drawn to. And the food, of course, because that's always fun to try new foods. Um, what to look for at this Christmas market is the Ferris wheel on Place de, du- de General de Gaulle, also known as the Grand Place, the city's main square. It's tucked into a gondola, and you can go for a high-altitude spin over the Belgian border town's Christmas tree and illuminated market aisle. Uh, you have a 160-foot high view from the top of this Ferris wheel, which sounds amazing and maybe a little yikes because I am afraid of heights. It's my own issue. I would try to do it though because it sounds awesome. Number three. Oh, I see pictures of nutcrackers. That looks awesome. Um, number three is Yule, Copenhagen, Denmark. Copenhagen celebrates Yule, as in Yuletide, it's spelled J-U-L, with a Christmas crafts market and surfeit of life, light bedecked Christmas trees in the city's famed historic amusement park, Tivoli Gardens. Nearly four miles of lights are artfully hung in patterns dictated by Tiffany's head designer, while 1,800 more strands are draped on the lakeside willows. Uh, join the Danes in warding off the cold with Abelskyver, iced donuts with black currant jam, and Glog, a steaming hot mulled red wine laden with raisins, almonds, cinnamon sticks, and cloves, all of which are steeped in aquavit or schnapps. There is also a crafts market installed along a canal in the historic Nyhaven district. Try to visit it between 5 and 6 p.m. on weekdays to catch the town crier. Okay, what caught me on this one was the glog, which sounds way better than the version I once had while living in Texas. There was a guy at a Christmas party that I went to, and he made, maybe it wasn't glog, but it sounded like that. And it was so insanely alcoholic. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, it burned your nose hairs just getting close to it, I swear. Uh, the, 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 you know, this has, um, it, it's hot mulled red wine. So first of all, if you like red wine and you like mulled wine, then that might be good. But it also has raisins, almonds, and cinnamon sticks, uh, cinnamon sticks and cloves. And those have been steeped in the aquavit or the schnapps. It doesn't say Oh, and this guy lit it, he lit his on fire. I think it was something different, but, um, the word reminded me of that. So lit it on fire. It was majorly, majorly alcoholic. You had to stay away from that if you wanted to actually be able to walk <laughs> more than two steps at a time. Oh my. So what to look for at, um, Yule in Copenhagen, Denmark. That is, um, pixie like Nisser. N-I-S-S-E-R. Tiny household elves that infest Denmark around Christmas, clad in clogs, red shirts, and pointed red caps. More fickle than their cousin Santa, they might bring presents if you leave them bowls of porridge in the attic. If you forget, they'll leave you all kinds of mischief instead. That, I love those stories. I love those traditions. Um, I will have to look up Nisser and see 
we the, see the stories behind them. I am, uh, I have Norwegian heritage and there are trolls in our heritage that they can be helpful or they can be very, very mischievous. So I am interested to look up and see how similar Nisser might be. We're going to go ahead and take our first break of the podcast. When we come back, we'll talk about number four on this list. Stay tuned. You're listening to the GSMC Travel Podcast and I'll be right back. Do you want to be healthier, yet you just don't know what to do? All these shows telling you this and that, but nothing seems to work. Well, listen close. Golden State Media Concepts has got something great for you. The health and wellness podcast dedicated to workout trends, healthy eating habits, diet, and everything about healthy living. Join us in our banters as we help you not just live life to the fullest, but live it to the healthiest. Welcome back to the GSMC Travel Podcast. We are talking about Christmas markets throughout Europe. We were just in Denmark at Yule. The next one is uh, Striesel Market, something along like that, uh, in Dresden, Germany. Some of the pictures here are amazing. I mean, so many lights. And that's one of the things I love about this time of year is all the lights. Um, nothing says Christmas like a four-ton fruitcake. Wow. Um, at least that's the uh, fervent opinion of the citizens of Dresden who parade their supersized stolen throughout the city in early December. Four ton fruitcake. I don't even want to know how you make a four ton fruitcake. Um, it's accompanied by the stolen Mockton or fruitcake maiden. The Saxon fruit loaf wends its way through the medieval streets before making its triumphal entry into the street sale market where surrounded by 230 glittering craft stalls and a 46 foot Christmas pyramid, the stolen is chopped into pieces that are inflicted upon the market goers. Inflicted. Oh my goodness. Um, Dresden's Streetzel Market and its odd traditions date back to 1434, make it, making it Germany's oldest continuously running Christmas market. Okay, they do not go small at this Christmas market. Holy buckets. A four-ton fruitcake. A 46-foot Christmas pyramid. I don't even know what that is exactly. I mean, obviously, it's shaped like a pyramid in some ways, but... Wow. And then I don't know what that means about inflicting it upon the market goers, except that how do you bake a four ton fruitcake that, well, most people don't like fruitcake in the first place. Some people love it. Other people think it's gross. So maybe it's just inflicted on the people. I really don't know. That one fascinates me. Um, something to look for at this market is uh, crafts. Top artisans from across Saxony arrive bearing all sorts of regional specialties, uh, from wooden crafts from the Ore Mountains to blown glass from Lausche, uh, Blaudruck indigo prints from the Lus- Lusatia region, incense burners shaped like nutcrackers, and Dresden's own famed blue and white ceramics. So that is what to look for there. Number five. Ooh, more pretty lights, of course. Um, number five, various markets in Prague, Czech Republic. Uh, the two best Christmas markets are on the long slope of Wenceslas Square and the medieval movie set of the old town square. First of all, just the fact that it's on Wenceslas Square is perfect because Wenceslas is, just evokes Christmas to me. Um, formed around a giant Christmas tree, manger scene, and small petting zoo. The market's brightly decorated stalls sell wooden toys, bohemian crystal, handmade jewelry, classic Czech marionettes, and plenty of potential for tooth decay. <laughs> Honey gingerbread. Um, V-A-N-O-C-V-K-A. If you know how to pronounce that, please do tell me. It's a braided pastry studded with raisins and also um, something called wasp, wasps nests, which are nutty cookies heavy with rum. Uh, you can wash it all down with mead and a sweet mulled wine. 
Christmas Eve dinner consists of wine, sausages, and carp. Huh, interesting. You'll see barrels of the fish everywhere. Slip a carp scale into your wallet to ensure an adequate cash flow for the coming uh, upcoming year. Carp scale. I was picturing like a bathroom scale or, you know, like some kind of scale that you would weigh the carp on, not a scale from the actual fish. Uh, my goodness. I need sleep, apparently. Um, what you look for at, at these markets is St. Nicholas and his cohort, cohorts. The original St. Nick, and we did just celebrate St. Nicholas Day on December 6th. Um, the one with a bishop's mitre and a staff is hugely popular in Prague. So a highlight of Christmas season is Mikulas or St. Nicholas Day. This kindly saint takes his own day, September, oh, December 5th, sorry, not December 6th, to Rome town accompanied by an angel and a demon. Oh my. Uh, the trio wades through the crowds of kids in the old town square, tallying the naughty and the nice. So you still get the naughty and the nice. I keep laughing at the meme that comes up on Facebook of the old uh, icon of St. Nicholas. <laughs> and um, It says that that moment when you realize that St. Nicholas was actually a Klingon. He lo- and there's, it's accompanied by a picture of Worf from Star Trek The Next Generation. Does that make me a total nerd? Like a theological sci-fi nerd? Probably. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. Number six. Christkind- Christkindle Market in Salzburg, Austria. Um, this is one of Europe's oldest markets. There are documents from the 15th century describing the fine crafts being sold by elderly women in front of the Salzburg Cathedral during Advent season. It is also smaller and more intimate than the other markets listed on this uh, list. It's just 96 stalls ranged under the floodlit Baroque stage set that is downtown Salzburg, with its found fountains snuggled under avant-garde glass casings for the winter, church bells echoing off the buildings, and the medieval castle glowering down from the cliff above. It's a perfect postcard backdrop for browsing stalls, selling pewter crafts, furry slippers, and loden coats while keeping warm with uh, Lebkuchen, which is gingerbread, roasted chestnuts and almonds, sausages, and sweet mulled wine. You know, I just remembered that I did have mulled wine at the Christmas market that I went to. See, it's, some of it's coming back to me. I know my sister was there, and that made everything good. <laughs> Austria is definitely a place that I would love to visit. And the pictures, uh, all the pictures are beautiful. I mean, you know, it's a, they're not going to put ugly pictures on something like this. Um, so what to look for? Mm. One of the world's largest advent calendars just south of town at the Schloss Hellbrunn, a 17th century pleasure palace built for Salzburg's archbishop princes that just so happens to have 24 windows on its facade. Perfect for an advent calendar. Today, there's a crafts market and a living nativity. I love advent calendars, so clearly this is a market that I need to check out at some point in my life. All right, number seven. Uh, Fira de Santa Lucia, Barcelona, Spain. And, oh, look at that picture. I, you know, okay, sorry. I shouldn't look at pictures when you can't look at them with me. Um, so this one has been going on for over 200 years and it is, as I said, the Fira Santa Lucia, Santa Lucia. Um, it opened in 1786 and it, uh, the, the market's very first stalls sold mainly clay and paper nativity scenes and children's stalls. Cool. As of 2019, more than 300 booths sprawl out on the Avenida, Avenida de la Cathedral in Pla de Sula Square. I'm so sorry to everyone for mispronouncing so many things. Um, That square is in the city's ancient center. And unlike most Christmas markets, you won't find any Germanic influence here. No bratwurst or mulled wine. (laughs) Instead, the market goes all out with Spanish flair, complemented nicely by the built-in Gothic architecture of the Cathedral of the Holy Cross and St. Eulalia. Very cool. Uh, So what to look for here? That would be your very own Tio de Nadal, a staple of Catalan Christmas tradition. Barcelona's littlest holiday celebrants know that gifts come at the cost of sucking up to Tio de Nadal, a smiling log made cozy in a red blanket and hat. Oh, that is fascinating and a little weird. 
Um, kids are in charge of looking after their Tio up until Christmas Eve when they flip a switch and beat him with a stick until he releases presents and treats. Oh my goodness. That's um wow traditions are weird aren't they i don't even know what to say about that but okay beating the log with a stick that seems like a good time to take a break i I need a moment (laughs) stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc travel podcast and i'll be right back Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. GSMC Travel Podcast. Uh, this list contains 30, 30, well, 13 um, Christmas markets around Europe, and we have done seven, which means we're only a little bit more than halfway. So I'm going to try to uh, to pick things up and maybe keep my own commentary to a minimum. I'll try not to be shocked about Christmas traditions. Uh, number eight, Marion Platz Markets in Munich, Germany. Um, this is, there is a, there's craft stalls surrounding a glittering 100 foot Christmas tree on the Marion Platz, which is filled with, um, oh, Munchener's, uh, people from Munich, I guess, munching on sausages. <laughs> See, we're back to that Germanic influence. Um, they're eating, they're drinking, the, um, and Munich trains its next generation of marketers in the heavenly workshop in the town hall's pub, where kids dress up as angels to practice arts, crafts, and the baking of traditional cookies. Adorable. Every evening at 5.30, from the Friday before Advent to the night before Christmas, a brass band and Al- alpine choir peel out carols from the balcony of the neo-Gothic uh, town hall. Uh, look for small themed markets sprinkled around the city, including the famed um, Crib Market or Rinder Market with Bavarian and Tyrolean nativity figures and a medieval market on Wittelsbacher plots. Also keep your eyes peeled for the Christmas tram that trundles through the old city serving spiced wine and gingerbread. Number nine, Advent Zagreb, Croatia. Advent in Zagreb is no small affair, and approaching any Croatian Christmas market should first involve a cinnamony glass of mulled wine. The main market spreads out um, uh, on a square, but Advent souvenir stalls unfurl all around the city. When you're not buying handcrafted ornaments um, or honey gingerbread, wander through the cap- capital district for a live, nat- live nativity scene or make for... Uh, Zhirnjevac Park, so sorry, where you'll find 220 trees done up in their most festive holiday lights. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, what to look for? Performances by the six-piece Ad Glorium Brass Ensemble on the balcony of the Croatian National Theater and other, na- la- la- and other landmark buildings in Zagreb every Sunday. Depending on the day, you could catch Christmas songs, polka, or a film score. Also swing by the Christmas Carol Tunnel, which mixes 3D art, live music, light shows, and video projections. That sounds really interesting. Christ Kindles Marek, Strasbourg, France. Uh, the France-Germany border has spent centuries dancing to either side of the Alsace region. It's currently in the France column, but its Teutonic traditions have blessed the Alsatian capital of Strasbourg with the oldest, 445 years and counting, and uh, according to this, best 
Christmas market in France, complete with caroling choirs, nativity plays, an ice rink, and mulled wine <laughs> served in boot-shaped mugs, as long as it's boot-shaped mugs and not just actual boots. Um, wooden stalls stacked are stacked with delicate ornaments and nativity figurines surrounded surround uh, Notre Dame Cathedral mm, and line pl- uh, Place Broglie. Edible specialties include pretzels, roasted chestnuts, uh, cookies, and a flame cake, which is thin a thin pizza of bacon, onions, and creme fraiche. Hmm. What to look for are stuffed white storks, the city mascot, and an Alsatian symbol of good luck in the boutiques of La Petite France, a picturesque canal-threaded corner of the historic center. These half-timbered houses, which once belonged to millers, tanners, and fishermen, are bathed in a warm yellow glow from garlands of Christmas lights, and the gingerbread bakery does a roaring seasonal trade. Number 11. Various markets in London, England. London's Christmas shopping season opens in November, when Regent Street ceremoniously switches on its Christmas lights for a pedestrian parade. London typically spreads out its Christmas cheer from the official Norwegian fur on Trafalgar Square to the ice skating rink at Somerset House. Trees bedecked with fairy lights herald Hyde Park's Winter Wonderland, which is mid-November through early January, which includes London's largest outdoor skating rink, a toboggan slide, a Ferris wheel, carolers, and a traditional German Christmas market. More small markets spring up at the Natural History Museum, which installs a temporary ice rink, as well as Greenwich Market. Christmas concerts abound, but it's hard to resist the carol sing-along at the Royal Albert Hall. Cool. What to look for? The Tower of London's Medieval Christmas, which is at the end of December. A fanciful, quote, historical reimagining set in the 1284 court of Edward I and the great Christmas pudding race of costumed contestants treading an obstacle course around Covent Garden while balancing fruitcakes on spoons. That makes me laugh, and I'd like to see it. (laughs) Number 12, uh, Christkindl Market in Vienna, Austria. Vienna's venerable Christkindl Market on uh, Rathausplatz Flings opens its stall shutters in mid-November, and three million visitors flock here each year for beeswax candles, wooden toys, and glass ornaments. Shoppers snack on cream-filled pastries, candied fruit, roasted chestnuts, and a spiced Christmas punch of wine, brandy, or schnapps sweetened with warm fruit juices. I'm gaining weight just reading all of this. Um, the market puts a premium on tradition. There are previ- precious few tacky stands selling plastic toys and Santa Claus, who many locals view as the Hollywood harbinger of a commercialized Christmas, is strictly verboten. Instead, there's the traditional Wiener Christkindl, the official Christ child, invariably played following, in, following an old Teutonic custom by a young woman with long blonde curls. Interesting. Huh. There's another market of looks Christmas wares in the Baroque forecourt of the suburban Schönbrunn Palace and a more intimate and sophisticated market lining the narrow cobblestone streets of Vienna's Spittelberg district. What to look for? More than three dozen Advent season concerts. The city of Hayden and Strauss invites choirs from around the world to perform Christmas music in the Rathaus every weekend, Friday to Sunday, from late November to December 24th as part of the Internationales Adventsingen Festival. And finally, number 13, it's a baker's dozen. That's Christkindl Market in Nuremberg, Germany. On the Friday before Advent, the golden Christmas angel appears on the high gallery of the medieval um, Frauenkirche to recite the opening prologue for one of the biggest and most famous Christmas markets of them all, and that is Nuremberg's Christkindl Market. Two million shoppers descend upon the 180 candy cane striped stalls that fill the main square with crafts, ornaments, and toys. The air is perfumed with gingerbread, glue vine, and smoke swirling from bratwurst grills. Uh, market officials enforce traditions with typical Teutonic efficiency. No plastic wreaths, no recorded Christmas muzak, or gaudy carousels allowed. <laughs> what to look for? Uh, Nuremberg plum people. Tiny puppets made of prune limbs, fig torsos, and walnut heads with painted on faces. 
stall owners compete to win the coveted gold plum person prize for their displays. Oh my gosh. I don't know what you thought about all of those Christmas markets throughout Europe, but now my bucket list has extended to not only going to a European Christmas market, but doing a tour. I just want to go to all of them. Um, I don't know when that would happen, but that sounds amazing. I love Advent. I love Christmas. And all of this just sounds, I wonder if you'd get overwhelmed after a while and you'd just be like, ugh, not another Christmas market and another glass of mulled wine. I can't do it. I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe if you were doing it year, year after year after year after year, but I think that sounds like uh, an amazing tour and I'm going to put that on my bucket list. So thank you so much for joining me for this episode of the GSMC Travel Podcast. I'm excited to announce that we have a new show host coming aboard in the next couple of weeks. Her name is Carolyn and uh, we are very excited to hear her take on the travel podcast. So keep uh, an ear out for Carolyn as host and join us next time for the next episode. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Thanks. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From travel to health and wellness to entertainment and life and happiness to sex and relationships. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts Travel Podcast.